What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 32. And before we get started, I thought I'd just let you know I had to jump through some hoops to figure this one out. Uh, I thought I had a, a working version of this entire program going, but I ended up finding a ton of bugs, uh, which I think I managed to work out. And I'm going to explain what they were, uh, and they're actually not that bad to fix. I also found some stuff that's just unnecessary. Uh, um, and in this video, we're going to end up going through fixing those. I'm going to put you through a little bit more of understanding modulus because we're going to be doing some basic manipulation to our modulus uh, function, I could say. I don't know if it's an actual function or if it's just an operator that guarantees a return. I don't know. Um, so we're uh, we're going to be messing around with that later, and that's going to become very useful when we work on our decryption function. Um, so I think we're just going to be getting to that one extra function that we have, which will be our uh, modulus manipulation, which I'll explain later. And yeah, that'll be it. Okay, so at the beginning, uh, I went ahead and changed it up a little bit. I wanted to create a few variables that I can easily just store the data for our text, our key, and our initial vector into. Uh, that way it would be easier to manipulate them so that I can show you different cases where things will work and will not work, and we can go ahead and fix them. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and update yours so it's as easy, uh, so it's easy to manipulate, you can as well. Uh, but if you just wanted to leave it out and you just wanted to manipulate these yourself and figure out what the encryption was, and then later on you could just do your decryption the same way, that's perfectly fine. The, uh, as long as you have this section of the code right, it should, for the most part, run the same. Um, so that was one of the first things I wanted to do. Uh, the next thing I wanted is I figured out that we don't actually need this right here. Is actually completely unnecessary. We never make any manipulation to text or ptext directly, uh, so there's no reason for me to have gone and reset the values of them again. Uh, we can just get the substring of the text based off of our block size, which is right here. And leading into block size, our block size is actually preventing us from running under very, very many test cases, and I'm going to explain that to you right now. So First of all, what happens if our uh, initial vector happens to be less than the value of our key? Well, you see that our key ends up being the length of our B size, and B size is what determines uh, which position in C ints, which position in PI vector, which position in P key, and C ints that we're going to be working with. I think I said C ints twice, but whatever. And if you didn't notice it yet, uh, our initial vector, if our initial vector ends up being smaller than x, this program is going to crash. So if this vector ends up being, or the size of this vector uh, ends up being smaller than x, then the program is going to crash. And I can show that to you right now. I can just run this program, and you see that by changing this to just a b, uh, it crashed. Um, We can test that with this one as well. Let's see if this one will crash. Uh, this one does not crash because the size of our B size is less than our initial vector. Um, so H, not ho, hi, B, C. Let's see what happens if we do B, C, E. That runs fine too. Okay, so apparently that was just the biggest issue. Um, but as you can see, it can be a little bit of a nuisance. And if you're trying to uh, have a variable key or a variable initial vector, uh, you might want it to be able to take in any input size of e either of those, either or either of those. Uh, so one of the things that we can do is we can either set uh, the bounds of our key to where it never goes past, or the bounds of our vector to where it never goes past here, and if it does, it just starts back over. And you can do that with an easy uh, percent uh, pi vector dot length, and that would pretty much do the same thing. That's going to be the same thing as what I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, but alternatively, we can just set the bounds equal to the smallest of the values. Uh, that way you never need to worry about it being outside of the value. So between key and initial vector, we're going to take 
the smaller of the two sizes, and we're going to be setting that equal to our size. And we can do that fairly easily by checking pkey.length. We want to, we're going to use another quick if statement like before with our text. Um, pkey.length, what are we questioning? So we're going to be questioning if pkey.length is greater than our uh, pi vector. pi vector dot length. Uh, and if it is, we want the value of our b size to be equal to our pi vector dot length. And if not, we want it to be p key dot length. And this will take care of a few cases. This will take care of, uh, so we want it to be the smaller of the value. Uh, if it's this, if p key is greater than it, we're going to pick pi vector because it's smaller than the two. If p key is less than uh, pi vector, then we're going to pick the p key. And if the same, we're, if they're the same, we're still going to pick the p key because then the lengths of the two sizes are going to be the same, and it won't actually matter. This will fill up just fine. Um, so that should take care of this issue right here. So we can go ahead and test that. Run, and we get ku. This is not the same as the kn. Uh, because we had the other initial, or we had the other vector point in here um, that ended up pushing this value up into an n rather than a u. Uh, so now that you see that can work, uh, we can, I think we can move on to the next part because those were the really the only two changes that, two or three changes I wanted to make. All right. So getting started with our modulus, if you remember how our modulus works, we take our two numbers, A and B, we add them together, and we mod it by a specific value to get our remainder. And this was just uh, the function kind of that we came up with to make it work. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, reverse this function. So if we have one of these values, we know what our modulus divisor is going to be, and we know what our remainder is, we should be able to find this extra b value here. And the reason we do that is so that we can, uh, anywhere that we have like a, a mod 26 is somewhere that we're going to want to reverse mod. And reversing the modulus right there uh, is pretty important so that we can get the, uh, the value of the plain text using our cipher text from both a initial vector and key combination. So understanding how the uh, modulus can be reversed, it's not that bad, it's pretty straightforward. We just need to perform a basic manipulation to our equation here. Um, and it might seem a little funky and I know the math isn't gonna be like exactly there, uh, but I'm not a mathematician. I may be taking some like higher level math classes, but this isn't, uh, I don't know if it's exactly a mathematical proof or not. Uh, so, so what we can do is if we know our value, uh, let's just say we have, let's see, we can use our a, b, and n right here. We can use five, six, and 10. So if we have five plus six, and we're gonna mod it with 10, we're gonna get one, right? Well, if we take, uh, if we take this five right here and we move it to the other side, so we just have this six and we do one minus five, this is gonna give us a negative four, right? So if this gives us a negative four, uh, we, can, we can actually figure out exactly what the number is that we're missing is, or we can actually figure out what the number that we're missing is. And we can do that by adding a full divisor uh, worth of data on top of it. And if we do that, if we add 10 to this side, we actually get positive 6, which ends up being our value. And to quickly put this into a uh, format that's easy to understand in reverse, um, we can do r minus a, where a is going to be one of the two values here, uh, plus our divisor, which is going to be n, this value right here. We want to take that whole thing and we want it to mod by 
26. And the reason we want to do that is because if r minus a is a positive number and we add 26 to it, or not 26, sorry, if we add, uh, if we, if r minus a is negative and we add an n to it, uh, it goes between the bounds of 0 to n. But if r minus a is positive and we add an n to it, it'll end up going over the value of n. So we just take the modulus of that again and it will give us uh, the value that we were missing. And just so that you can test to see that this formula works, uh, let's do let's do something easy. Let's do 5. So we've already done one test case with a, a 5, 6, and 10. So let's do 5, 5. Let's do 5 plus 5 mod uh, 10 equals. So we get 5 plus 5 equals 10, so we should get 0, right? So if we take 0 and we subtract 5 from it, uh, we will get a 5% 10 is equal to 0 minus 5. And then if we just add an additional 10 to it, we should get a positive 5 value, which ends up being our B value. And if we do it using our formula right here, and we do uh, r, which was 0. So we had 0 minus 5 uh, plus 10, which actually ends up being exactly the same as what we have right here. Um, and that will give us a uh, or percent. It was percent 10, yeah. And that would just give us a 5, which is still our missing number. So we're going to go ahead and implement that. It's actually really, really easy to implement. Uh, it's really just this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. Uh, it'll only actually take a minute. Uh, so public static void. This is actually going to be an int. And we're going to call this revmod int divisor. We're going to be doing int a and int r, which is going to be our remainder. And we are just going to be returning. Like we said, it's going to be r minus a plus our divisor, percent our divisor. And returning that should give us our uh, reverse mod. Um, so that's a pretty, pretty basic function. And I'm just going to go test this up here real quick. So I'm going to do system.out.println. And we're going to rev mod. Our divisor is going to be 10. We're going to do 5, and we're going to do our remainder ended up being 0, so we can just do that. So let's run this file, and you see we get a 5 in here. So uh, now we know that uh, 5 plus 5, or now we know that if 10 was our divisor and 5 was our number and we ended up with no remainder, our other number had to be 5 in order for it to have, uh, or a multiple of 5, for it to have been our number. And since we only want the scope of our 0 to 10, and 5 is the only, or from 0 to 9, and 5 is the only value between 0 and 9 that's a multiple of 10, uh, that's how we know that 5 is our answer. So as you can see, this works out pretty well. Uh, we got our rev mod function done, and I think that is about all the time that I have right now. Um, so in the next video, we're going to actually be going through our decrypt function. And I think you f you'll find that it is not as bad as it looks. We're actually going to be taking almost everything in here and copying and pasting it, which is going to be really easy. And it's going to save us a lot of time for whenever. And I'm not because I'm not going to go through and re uh, do each piece when it's almost all exactly the same. Um, so I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and uh, subscribe. Maybe like the video if you like it. Uh, if not, whatever. Uh, so I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.